There are strange things out there that seem to have no explanation. Sometimes they are conjured up by the darkest corners of our subconscious. But on occasion, they dwell beyond the confines of our imagination. They may come from another realm, or out of the sky, or from beyond the grave. Once they set foot into our world, the line between dreams and reality becomes unclear. It's our job to investigate these reports and compile the Virginia Paranormal Case Files. There are several reasons that spirits may manifest in a house. Sometimes it's because they're attached to the location. Sometimes it's because they're attached to a person. These spiritual manifestations may come as bumps in the night or stray sounds that are often discounted for more rational explanations. But in some cases, a spirit is able to step beyond the veil if only for a brief moment and manifest as an apparition. This is what happened at a home in Norfolk, Virginia, where residents captured an apparition on their surveillance camera. This image validated the sounds they'd been hearing and the unusual reactions of their dogs, who would bark at seemingly thin air. Upon seeing this evidence, we decided to head down to Norfolk and investigate. So I'm walking around taking some baseline photographs. And when you take the baseline photos, you want to take them in duplicate. You want to take one right after the other. And you want to make sure that you're standing in one location when you do this. So you don't move the camera between the two photos. And the reason why we do this is because not only do these photos act like documentation that we can refer back to at a later date. Um, for instance, we've had times when we're walking around in the dark videoing and we see something and we say, what is that? It looks like a person standing there. We can refer back to these photographs that are taken in the light to figure out exactly what that is and if it's something that's natural, something that's actually there. Now, another reason why we take them in duplicate is because we've had occasions where we take one picture and something is actually in the photo. And in the second picture taken just moments later, there's nothing there, which to us says that there's really something going on there. Um, if it's there one moment, you haven't moved the camera, the lighting conditions have not changed, and it's not there in the next photo, it's, it's definitely something noteworthy. After conducting our baseline sweep, we decided to sit down with the client, Veronica, for an interview. In the beginning, it was just little noises here and there. Um, hi. There has been some what-ifs of seeing shadows. Uh, we would dismiss them thinking that it was just us um, until the night that there was no doubt of exactly what I seen. I was sick. I took some sinus medication and went to bed. It was a every four-hour medication. I woke up really stuffy, could not sleep. I decided to come into my living room from my bedroom, took my medicine, went back to my room, and about 30 minutes later, I have a camera in my kitchen, and I get alarmed when there's motion. And I was trying to figure out who I woke up in my home, so I took a peek at the camera to see if I would woke somebody up. And... It was a complete silhouette of a person. It was not anybody in my home. You could tell it was not a living person, but like a silhouette of a person. I took a couple of deep breaths because I always thought, but I never really knew. I always had that doubt, but there was no doubt what I seen that night. I got up out of my bed and I walked through my house and there was nobody out and about at my house that night. And I woke, I, I woke my daughter and I woke my roommate to share what had happened and I went back to sleep and since then there has still been motion in my kitchen on several different occasions but nothing there 
A lot of times I just dismissed it before this. My dogs um, run to my closet door, run to my bedroom door, as if somebody was within the home. But there's nobody there. Last night, prime example, my dog just went ate crap to the point come on, up, that my husband could not calm him down. And my smallest dog was pawing at the door trying to get out of my room because mm. there was something on the other side of that door that they wanted. Yeah. Now, what seems strange to me is that you can't see the bottom of the legs. Yeah. It almost looks like whatever this is, is standing on the ground with a crawl space below us, being below us, that's blocking out our view of what would be its thighs. Because it, it just looks like you see the head, you see, see the shoulders. I see that you're saying that. Like you see, stand, you see the bottom yeah, of it, you see the torso. See you see, see, you there, see there would be the, the butt right the, there. Yeah, you see the hips and the butt you know, and about down bottom. to mid-thigh. And then <clears> it completely disappears. Mm -hmm. So yeah. something is standing on the ground standing as if ground, this house is not even floor. here like in its existence mm -hmm. and its world. So it almost makes me wonder if this is something that's attached to the land or something that's been haunting the land prior to this house actually being here. But whatever it is, it's whatever pretty strange to, to see such a detailed figure that goes down to the thighs and then just it's stops really at the floor. We decided to start our investigation in the kitchen where the apparition had been seen. So up here is the security camera and it's pointing over towards this area of the kitchen and right where, probably where David's standing, is where they picked up this apparition. So what we're going to do is start with a spirit box session in here. We don't want to do any EVP sessions just because there's so many people in the house. We don't want to risk picking up a stray voice or something that we're not sure of and presenting that as evidence. So we're going to run the spirit box, see if any voices come through it. And at the same time, I think we're going to run the Paratech app, which is an app that, once again, we don't put a whole lot of stock in apps. But this one has produced some interesting results, so we'd like to continue to experiment with it, just to see if there's anything related. Okay, I'm Jeff. I'm Linda. I'm Megan. I'm David. And we don't mean to impose by any means, but we saw a picture of what looked like somebody standing here in the kitchen the other night. And we want to know if that person is here with us now. If you are, could you tell us your name? Just for a note, we do have Sammy coming up on the Paratech app over here. It's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, of all the things that that app could spit out, it spits out a name. Right. Right, now it does have a database of names in it that will put out random things. But to put out a name right when you ask for one is an interesting coincidence right. at least. Can you tell us if you're a male or a female? There's something right before um, that. It was like this weird... Um, I don't even know what it was. It was just like a weird sound. Yeah. I've wondered that about that app before. Mm -hmm. Man. Sammy's a man. Man? Sammy man. Did you used to live on this land or in a house nearby? After running the spirit box for some time, we decided to turn out the lights to see if the spirit would be more willing to communicate. As we sat in the darkness, the dogs out in the living room seemed to react to something. Sounds like something unusual. Hmm. Yeah, dogs are nothing. The way they're reacting. Yeah, it's true, yeah, because they were all in there. 
Just before the dog started barking, Veronica said she saw a strange flash of light. There was a flash of light and then my dogs went ape crap. They were at the door trying to come through that bedroom door to get into this living room. My dogs have never done that before. I do not know what just happened, but something happened. And you said you had to separate them. I had to separate them. Um, we have the babies are over here and my other one's in the bathroom. They were going into that kitchen. He was trying to V-line. I don't know what he caught. Well, and when you were standing right here in the kind of just beyond the threshold into the kitchen here, uh, they saw the flash of light right above your head. Hmm. So. Right above Jeff's head? Yeah. Okay. Better his than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Better his than mine. The apparition. Um, it was kind of like through the floor so she was suggesting that it was like a residual thing so what i was thinking is do something that we did up in um wildwood sanitarium i think it was and we also did that um a few other places but we would just sit in silence um and since we think it's residual um just hoping that we would just catch like little fragments um of like their world i guess and it's also too important to note that like I, I, me and you both, I think, I, I don't know if you did, we'd hear like little pieces of fragments on the spirit box. Right. So yeah, I'm wondering, words, yeah, yeah, like inaudible stuff. So I'm really wondering if like we just sit in silence for a little bit yeah. um, and really just stay as quiet as yeah, we can. Yeah, exactly. And really right. just try to like catch pieces of their world, you know. Yeah. Or noises mm -hmm. or anything else that may came, come through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because there's a lot to be said for just silent <clears throat> observation yeah. as well. So. Mm -hmm. That might be a good idea. Mm -hmm. And you notice stuff too, like you said, like right. when you're when you're just sitting there, you yeah. notice, and your your senses too, like when you just um, close your eyes. I'm pretty sure, like your other senses are more right. in tune. In they compensate. Tune. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After standing quietly in the dark and observing for several minutes, nothing seemed to manifest. At this time, David decided to propose an interesting theory. So in that um the back bed. <coughs> um, I think it was the dog. Um, they stare up into like the corner of the room. And if y'all remember, there's been several cases that we've had all the time in corners. Yes. Up. And like, I, do, I don't know why I just now thought of that. But like, and, and it's kind of weird because there's a mirror right there. You would think the dog would stare into the mirror, but it stares the corner. Mm -hmm. And that's like, a lot of times, like, there's one in um, a Virginia Beach area right. that had that. There's, it's it's pretty consistently. So, like, I'm almost wondering if, like, I, I, I have no idea, but I wonder if, like, we could make, like, a hypothesis as to, like, why, or, like, a theory as to why. Why they stare up in the corner. This is a what if right here. This is a what if <laughs> moment. Right. This is, this is a what if moment right here. That's just it. I can't imagine why something, and, and I remember when mm -hmm. I was a teenager, go into this house that my friend said was haunted that she lived in. It was an old Civil War hospital mm -hmm. that she lived in. And I'm sitting there in her bedroom with her chihuahua and she's taking a shower and the dog just starts looking up into the corner of the room barking and it freaked me out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, out of there. But why the corner? I mean... You know what? I saw that too. Is it like they hover up there? Because yeah, they're, they're looking like up, up at the ceiling. At us? What if... It's because they're in a different plane. This is this dimension, and we're on this plane. I think this is a paranormal what book. If, what if they're on another plane? So their plane is slightly altered than ours. So that's the flat area for them up there. You know what like I'm saying? Like ground level. Is, yes. And yeah. it just happens to be, from our perspective, up in that area. It could be. Look at that. That's a good one for you. That's an interesting... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Counter that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Aliens. So they come from the sky. That's why the dogs bark up at the corner. Yep. Could be. I was why are they about, below the sky? I, but Who? see, I was thinking the animals. about energy. So the, why are they down here? What do you mean? They're supposed to be. Like Who the animals? Yeah. Why are they below? Because the, the animals don't because float or anything like that. They just run around the house. What? I, was I, the, I thought the plane was like, Ener like any energy. You talk about the animals or the plane? Air flows, no, the it won't collect in the corners. The, mm -hmm. the floor the bedroom, was up here, up so the they're looking up mm -hmm. like you know, that. Right. Energy and, and so why are they below it's the not going to collect up. Who, the dogs? Yeah. It's going to energy. Because they're down on our floor, which is below yeah. Yeah. David's imaginary plane. <laughs> okay. But 
I was so confused. Maybe the maybe dog is in hell or something. Yeah, there, it's like yeah what he's energy. saying is that basically the the ghost you know floor I mean? is higher than our floor. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So our floor is here, the dog is here, the ghost plane the is up there. So right. The ghosts have their own floor. So right. Like Doesn't it sound yeah. more likely or, that or it would like be like alien stuff? Yeah. Yes, yes. Like because of the ghosts. Right. Like in this, in this particular okay. room. Well, can we take an elevator up there? The energy would, and, or the air. We picked up one possible response in the kitchen that seemed to tell us that the entity was indeed a female. Can you tell us if you're a male or a female? After finishing in the kitchen, we decided to head into the master bedroom, where reportedly the dogs would react to some unseen entity in the corner near the closet. So we're in the back bedroom here. This is the master bedroom, and this is where they have a report that the dog would actually sit and look up in this direction, up toward the top corner, toward the ceiling. Now, originally they thought that perhaps the dogs were looking at a reflection of themselves or something in the mirrored uh, doors, and... Then they actually realized that the dogs were not looking in the mirrors. They were looking up toward the ceiling, toward the corner a little bit more. So we're stepping in here so that we can take a look, try to um, do a little bit of spirit box session, see if we can get anything here, and see what happens. All right, I'm Jeff. Linda. I'm Jeff. And we don't mean to impose by any means. But uh, it's been brought to our attention that the dogs here tend to be fond of this corner. Is there anybody in here with us? Can you tell us why the dogs would respond to this corner? Try going a little closer to the corner with that. This? Yeah, just to see. Eyes. Eyes. Guys. Heavy. On the okay, so what we're going to do is start an EVP session here because it's fairly quiet. And with this, we'll constantly monitor that corner just to see if there's any temperature fluctuations while we have the EMF detector going as well. And what kind of thermometer is that? This is an infrared surface thermometer, so as long as it's pointed at that corner, uh, wherever the red dot is, it will tell us what the temperature is of that surface. And where can one get such a beautiful red? infrared thermometer. Oh, this come from Sears. Oh, so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we advertise to these people. We do. <laughs> we plug them all the time. Craftsman, Sears, everything. Where's the sponsorship? I know. Come on. Can you tell us we turned off that radio and perhaps that's less noise for you. Can you tell us your name, please? Are you okay with the dogs being in this room? Can you move something? How do you feel about us being here and asking you questions? We continued the EVP session for some time before finally wrapping it up. We did pick up one possible response, which sounded like a disembodied voice saying, I see you. I decided to take a look outside. The client reported a high raccoon population in the area and I wanted to eliminate the possibility that raccoons were getting into the attic and causing the dog's reactions to the corner of the master bedroom. I looked around the marsh and under the house. When I shone my light at the peak of the house, I did see a possible point of entry for raccoons and other small animals. 
I decided to venture into the attic for a closer look. When we opened the attic door, we were met with an interesting surprise. Okay, so we're trying to open the attic because we wanted to go up there and see if there's a possibility you gotta that see this. raccoons or animals could get in there. Right. And if you come over here, you can see. Yeah, see all that stuff. This is on top of the attic door. <gasps> How was that? Where Somehow, was it originally? They were sitting on the sides, on the floor. That box was not upside down. Yeah, there's somehow no way that you box could put this box over. upside down. Something had to knock it over. I was wondering right. how close it was to the... Oh, oh I know. No. I can't do that. I, yeah. but, wow. Yeah, somehow that whole box yeah, got... Kinda... But it's tipped crystal. upside down. Yeah, it's upside down. It That's the yeah. weird thing about it. So, I mean, that would have to be... And it's... You can see if you can come around... And see everything that's in this box. I mean, it's yeah, not, I can, can feel it, it on the door. I mean, the ladder's there, but it's still. Yeah. It would take more than a. It would take more than a little breeze to no, knock that, that box over. Definitely, and you would think if somebody was home, they would have heard it. <laughs> right. Yeah, you would have heard that fall. Yeah. For sure. This is crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. We're sitting like that. So this box was over here to the left? It would, it would have been either sitting to the sure. left or the right. If you look up, you'll see how my son just sits things off around to the side so he doesn't have to climb up there. Yeah. But like I said, he's 18. He would not have... I know it's right that's here in the just, center. That's just weird. Yeah. That's just... The only thing I can figure is perhaps he stacked the box on top of the one that's sitting here that I can see and it fell over. So that opening there, my concern was that raccoons were coming in there and possibly bedding down over the top of the attic. It very well not, could be, yeah. You know, over the top of the closet. Yeah. That's where the dogs are barking at. So I'm looking for signs of raccoons coming in and one sure sign I'm sure might be droppings. After finding no sure signs that raccoons had been in the attic, we decided to head out to the living room, where the client's daughter reported seeing these strange flashes of light throughout the day. So there have been times when the customers were sitting, the clients were sitting here in the, in the living room. Uh, the last time was just today, I believe she mm -hmm. said, sitting here on this red sofa that you're sitting on and watching TV up there to your left and she would see flashes of light that she described as like a bright flashlight. Um, very, very bright, not just a little like spark like you see out of the corner of your eye occasionally, but, but actually a big flash of light. So we're going to sit here in the living room and run a spirit box session and see if we can get anything here. Can you tell us what causes these flashes of light <coughs> over in the hallway here? Can you make it happen now while we're sitting here watching? It says David. Does it? Oh, that said no. We picked up two possible responses via the spirit box in the living room. Can you make it happen now while we're sitting here watching? No! It says David. Does it? Oh, that's a no. possibility that the responses from the spirit box were simply radio chatter. However, they did seem to correlate with the line of questioning. Research revealed that there is a St. Paul's church and St. Paul's apartment complex not far from the location, which could point to radio chatter. 
The apparition in the kitchen brought up some interesting questions. Could it be a spirit attached to the area from before the house was built? Or is it attached to one of the residents? Or maybe it was just a passing ghost? Whatever be the case, the moment it slipped through the veil and set foot in our realm, a perfectly placed camera captured that moment and preserved a very compelling piece of evidence to support the claims of paranormal activity that impacts the daily lives of this family. According to the residents, they never felt threatened by the phantom visitor, and since our investigation, the house has been much quieter.